Thanks so much, Debbie. And hello, everyone. And a super warm welcome to day three, the final day of the CHS exchange. We've learned a lot so far from day one, focusing on what it really takes to take a people-centered approach to our work. And then yesterday, where we discussed how to facilitate that people-centered approach, how the power structures need to change to enable this. And today's discussion is gonna be just as interesting and lively as the challenge for us today is considering how we do better to join forces to make these changes. To start this conversation, we'll focus on one of the key collective initiatives in the sector to drive change. And to speak to us on this, the grand bargain. To speak to us on this, I'm extremely delighted to be joined by our keynote speaker, Jan Egerland. We're especially pleased to have him with him this morning as he's literally just back last night from his trip to Afghanistan. I imagine with this audience, Jan doesn't need much introduction as the Secretary General of Norwegian Refugee Council, but he's speaking to us today in his capacity as the recently appointed eminent person for the Grand Bargain. So we're delighted to have Jan with us to share his views with us on the ambitions for the Grand Bargain, how we can join forces to bring about the changes we need with a particular focus around accountability to people affected in crisis and greater inclusion. We're obviously super looking forward to hearing what Jan has to tell us or explain to us about the Grand Bargain 2.0, but he's also really keen to hear from yourselves. So do please use the chat function, share your questions in the chat, Stanley, our facilitator, who I hope you've all met by now, will join us shortly after Jan's speech to lead us through the question and answer session. So Jan, if I can hand over to you, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much. Uh, wonderful to be here. And thanks, Tanya. Uh, the core humanitarian standards, so important. Uh, thanks for all you're doing for uh, lifting quality within the sector and, and I, I am acutely aware that you've had two days of discussions that I have not been part of because I have been in Kabul uh, and, and surrounding areas over the recent uh, days. Uh, and I think it could actually inform a little bit our, our discussion. There is nothing like being uh, there discussing with authorities, in this case, the Taliban that took over, and speaking to people in great need. I spent many hours uh, in tents and, and uh, in, in, in the open with the people that are now fearing for their lives this coming winter. Uh, speaking to the, our local uh, humanitarian uh, workers, especially the Afghan staff, female and male uh, of, of, of many organizations, it really uh, it, it is always a reality check. Uh, so um, let's start uh, by answering the question, well, why a grand bargain? And, and then how can it help us uh, to achieve the goal of participation of the people we are there to serve, the people that should be in charge, really, of their, of their realities and in charge of how we serve them. Now, the grand bargain, of course, comes out of the whole self-reflection of the humanitarian community uh, in uh, five, six, seven years back, when Again, there was a, a moment of great challenge for humanitarians and developmental uh, people on all levels. Um, it was a time like now, similar to, to how we are now, where we, where we were feeling that the gap between needs and ability to answer and cover needs was growing. Uh, so, um, for this uh, this uh, humanitarian summit in Istanbul, that many of you, where many of us uh, participated, 
a, a, a very high level panel came with uh, this report uh, that had that tried to uh, come with action points in three areas how to increase resources for humanitarian work and development work how to shrink needs by doing preventative action and how to have a grand bargain between donors those who provide resources and those who are uh, active frontline organizations doing work with and for people in need that the two have a grand bargain to make aid more efficient and more effective and the efficiency and the effectiveness was co concentrated on trying to do away with the one million unnecessary reporting procedures the multiplicity of financial reporting the the, the lack of, of, of common uh, standards, common action, uh, the lack of efficient coordination, and the lack of involvement of the people in need. Uh, the, the, uh, at the time, there was, was already this sense we have, we all share now, that the, the mother with five who is alone facing the adverse circumstances is not really asked what do you need how can we best serve you how are we doing what, what, how can we help you to help yourself out of all of, of, of the uh, overwhelming challenges that you are now facing uh, uh, also, at the time, uh, there, there were two things uh, identified that is tightly uh, connected to this. One is the need of providing cash, multi-purpose cash, uh, at the hands of people in need. And the other uh, uh, one was how can one um, empower the, 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 the people that we are there to serve uh, to have organizations that can serve their own uh, brothers and sisters uh, around them, uh, later called localization. Uh, this, uh, the, so let's see, how, how did it do? How, how did we do? Well, there was a report uh, now after five years, uh, it was supposed to be a five year initiative uh, that said it's mixed. There were progress. Uh, there were, was, for example, progress in that a number of donors did do more quality funding. Many uh, organizations do now have framework agreements, including my own, with some donors that give us some predictability, multi-year uh, predictability on funding, less bureaucracy, more flexibility. Uh, in the COVID era, the, many donors gave more uh, flexibility uh, to many uh, of, of, of the, uh, the activists. Uh, there, there has been a, 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 a tremendous growth in the use of cash. I was part of a, of a high-level panel uh, that set down by in, in, in the UK called High-Level Panel on Cash. This was 2014, 2015, and uh, the whole point was cash was going too slow. Uh, and I, I, I coined a, a question that came out in this high-level high report that many have used since. Why not cash? And if not now, when? And since that time, over these five years, I think it's like five times the 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 the, uh, the percentage of 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 all humanitarian work that is now a cash in the hands of people in need that can use themselves. So one good example, um, we have had uh, some progress in 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 enabling local organisations to do um, to 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 have more resources and more capacity uh, to help their own um, people. Uh, but that's an area where, where there's been little, uh, uh, too little progress. Um, and with many donors, they are still too much year to year and too little 
uh, quality funding. The, 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 a couple of the very largest have, have not done what some of the medium-sized uh, uh, humanitarian donors have done, for example. Uh, in terms of coordination among ourselves, uh, it's also mixed. Uh, I, I think uh, uh, cash coordination, for example, is lagging behind compared to many other sectors given the amount of cash that is now distributed to people in need. So, um, uh, ending perhaps, before, uh, and then let's spend the rest of the time with, with dialogue. Um, we then, after five years, um, they, they, uh, we found out that we need to zoom in and make real progress on some areas where there has not been sufficient uh, progress. And, the, uh, and, and then create some so-called caucuses where some of the signatories of the grand bargain can participate to really come with proposals that could really cut through the red tape and make real progress and then lift this up on a political level in both uh, among donors and among um, actors so that we're making, uh, making progress. And again, who's the signatories of the grand bargain? It's the largest humanitarian, all of the largest humanitarian donors. It's the it's it's nearly all of the UN agencies. It's a it's a it's a it's a large group of international non-governmental organisations, and it is um, uh, now thankfully uh, we've been able also to have in uh, the local NGOs even in the facilitation group. So it's been extended as such. Uh, in two words, it's the one body where all of those who are who have the fingerprints or, uh, or, or on humanitarian aid from the donor to 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 the NGO uh, are, are taking uh, part. So of course we need to be able to fix these things. And the three things that we're now doing in the, in the Grand Bargain um, uh, 2, uh, with, uh, with, with some caucuses being set up, is concentrate on getting um, quality funding to more donors and more humanitarian uh, actors, multi-year and flexible, uh, have more funding go to local organizations, concentrating on how intermediaries between donors who say that their parliament, their rules, their laws cannot allow direct funding to a large degree, how intermediaries can do much better in, 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 in getting funding in the hands of the local organization, and thereby also having all of us much more um, uh, listening to humanitarian, uh, to, to the people in need through the participation uh, 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 revolution. Uh, I, Ending here, I hope in the period that I am the person uh, that, that we can end up now in these two years by having the quantum leap that you discussed over the last two days of putting people in charge of, 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 of relief. It was very clear that the women I met, the, the women I met in these camps who are really pacing, you know, life and death uh, situations in the next coming months, are saying things that are a little bit different from all of those who are now portraying to be the spokesmen and women uh, uh, globally uh, in this new dramatic era of, of a Taliban takeover in Afghanistan. They should be in charge. We should have two-way communications in all, all, 100% of all our work, all over the, the world uh, within the next uh, two-year period. That would be my ambition. Back to you uh, for, for questions. Thank, thank you, Jan. Yes, thank you, Jan. Um, you mentioned a couple of things. Uh, you have uh, been talking about how to, to increase the resources to the people affected by crisis and also how to reduce the need. And reducing the need would mean that we actually uh, do preventive action, right? Yeah. And you are, you are also saying that um, you, we need a quantum leap. And uh, some people are talking about a revolution in terms of a participation revolution. 
do we really need a revolution or are we do we need building blocks to get us to where we want to be on the grand bargain? Yeah, well, uh, I think the, the goals have to be revolutionary, uh, really. We have, no, we have no time to lose in, 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 in putting people in the center, all of the things you've discussed. Uh, and, and too many times, still, it's people like me and you, Stanley, who went away, think that we know what they need and therefore set the priorities and do a lot of things without really listening and, uh, and, and, and asking, um, uh, etc. Again, I'm back to, to now the, the, the reality for the displaced in Afghanistan. I mean, their number one concern is in one voice to me. We fear we will not survive this winter. And you, the humanitarians, have five weeks. Five, in five weeks. So this discussion in, in donor capitals and also in seminars and, and webinars among us is, is really completely over the heads. They, they need shelter, wash, and a resumption of education for, for boys and girls, uh, uh, certainly. But at the moment, their economy, economy is in free fall. And there is no... There is no Aid, the aid is not coming because of both donors not transferring money and because of humanitarian organizations not resuming yet full operations there. It, it's, a, it's a complete crisis that they feed back to us. Thank you, Jan. We have a, a question from Tanya Woods. Uh, thank you so much, Jan. Uh, part of the grand bargain is, the, is, the compliment, is to complement to, to a participation revolution uh, what do you think are, are the co current focus that will create that revolution? Well, the, I mean, the current forces are really those who are in the grand bargain. I mean, the, the, I, I think the donors can and should be even clearer and tougher with us as humanitarians and say, if you don't have a feedback mechanism where you're able and willing to really real-time reform uh, revolutionize your uh, your uh, response by listening to the people um, and by partnering with the local uh, communities you cannot have our, our money and equally that we uh, uh, use the best practices that we have now to to go from the pilots in this to, 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 to standards. It's not, but I mean, revolution, it's, it also has to be reform. I mean, we need, we need also to, to understand how we do it. I, one example, I was in, also in Congo when the volca volcano erupted by coincidence, uh, but the, <laughs> there, there is a call center that my organ organization has, has, has set up, mm -hmm. where in many local languages, thousands of people call in, thousands of people, uh, with, with the request, feedback, uh, demands, uh, criticism. Um, it, there is a, an enormous absorption problem, uh, of course, in, in the limited staff in sifting through all of this and really being able to reform as we should. So it's not, e it's not easy to do the, the revolution. It has to be learning, and, but, but the, the vision has to be revolutionary. Hmm. Thank you. I have another question for you. Thank you for sharing your perspective, Mr. Egeland, says, someone, says uh, Radini. Uh, underpinning so much of the move towards greater efficiency is the move to get and hold more community level da data. With your recent experience in Afghanistan and the grand bargain focus on efficiency, what would be your top suggestions for improving responsible data management for both donors and NGOs and international NGOs? <laughs> That's a long yeah, question. I mean, no, I mean it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great question. Um, uh, I mean, one of the achievements of, of the grand bargain era, according to the ODI report, it was a, a great evaluation report, which gave this mixed picture. And, 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 but among the progresses was there is more data. There is more common humanitarian assessments where, where more is, uh, 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 assessment um, and needs uh, 
based. We have the common uh, humanitarian overviews and the common uh, humanitarian response plans. They are better. Um, but but it is, I mean, again, Afghanistan is, is a very, very good example. We lost now three, two, 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 mo two months at least by, to the, by the whole tumultuous turn mm. of events. It, it, the, Taliban, the meetings I had with the Taliban leaders, I mean, there were, were Taliban soldiers with American machine guns in their hands uh, and in American uniforms in, in the meeting room. I mean, just as an illustration of, of the change. So we lost two, two, two months. We cannot use three months now to have a new assessment. Mm -hmm. It's a race against the winter. The, the people I met will die. They are in the open. Uh, people were making uh, a family who was there that I, I met. We were trying to make a, a, a house out of um, uh, wet mud. Uh, and 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 I asked, do, well, do you have any income? Or do you have, and do you have any way of getting food? And I said, no income, no food, no nothing. The, the mothers I asked uh, really. Do, have you seen now that women have been uh, let out of work and that your girls have been deprived of education? What they said was, we've been here now several years. We never had education for neither our boys or our girls, and we never had one single day of work in the, re in the five last, uh, for last, last, uh, last years. So, of course, their message is, why, why haven't you started work for us in a way? Not for a not for an enormous assessment. It's a race against the clock there. Elsewhere, it, it's, it's a need for much better data because we're probably doing wasting resources by doing things wrongly and clearly not having an an, an, an assessed listening mode to 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 change the aid. Yeah, uh, there is another one. Thank you, Jan. Uh, dear, dear Jan, how do you, it's from Sylvia Robert, Sylvia Robert, how do you foresee participation happening in a context such as Tigray in Ethiopia? And overall, what and how are we learning from our collective failure in terms of quality and accountability to affected populations in, the, in this part of the world, Ethiopia? Yeah. And many, many thanks for sharing your thoughts and views here. No, it's, a, it's a good question, really, because, um, again, Tigray and Ethiopia should be a, a reality check for, for many of us. My organization is, together with MSF and, and, and the third group, suspended in Ethiopia because we spoke out on what happened in, in Tigray. And we were among the few who really spoke out uh, in the early stages. Uh, we, we cannot do anything for the people who are dying on, on our watch. Um, and I, I think in this case, there was too little collective protection stand. And there was too, uh, too uh, weak response and too weak will to stand up for basic humanitarian principles. So at the moment, we're not there. We're, we're failing these people. Uh, and, 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 and the rest of the humanitarian community, too, is, is largely, largely failing. They are not getting aid. They are not getting uh, protection. They're not getting presence there. Uh, we have been suspended, as my organization, in five places because we stood up for principle by listening to people and telling uh, the world what's happening what was happening really, and assertive governments is then uh, coming, coming after us. Um, again, this is one thing we need to, do, to be discussing. Uh, if, if we basically, to, if, if, we're, if they specialized in scaring us, I'm talking now about parties on conflicts and, 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 uh, and assertive governments, and we specialize in being scared all the time, um, and, 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 and end up with taking a selfie, look at me and my two trucks, uh, I made it through uh, for uh, a fraction of a percentage of the population, were failing the people. Yeah, so that is a touching uh, story from coming from Ethiopia. Uh, my question for you is, um, 
given all this, you have been at, at this job for a long time and your commitment is incredible to, 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 and an inspiration for, for all of us. What is it that keeps you going? What keeps you energized? Especially in, 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 in terms of these experiences where because of standing up for the rights of the people, you get shut out, you get expended from countries. No, I keep, I keep going like, like very many of the, of the, of the people uh, that are on uh, because we believe in the mission and we, we, we see positive change. So, uh, so of, of course, perhaps part of our problem and my problem in my advocacy is that I keep hammering all of the places where we fail. You know, we succeed in more places than we fail. We made progress over the, these last years. It's, 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 it's no doubt that we are better in saving lives. Mm -hmm. Since I started, mortality figures are down, morbidity figures are, are down, education uh, figures are up. For, for girls and boys, uh, uh, the the, the uh, epidemic disease control is 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 much better. Uh, the uh, the our presence in in the deep field, so called, as a, as a loaded uh, term, in, in among among people, is better. And I think also we're we're we're, we're better in being more self critical. I mean, the core human understanding is a good example of that. So mm -hmm. that's what keeps me going. I'm, so privileged to have a job in this sector, really. Mm, thank you. We, I'll take one more uh, question. Um, this is from Kat uh, Skehan. I hope I pronounce your name right, Kat. Thank you so much, Jan. What do you think is the biggest opportunity to increase uptake of the CHS at the collective level and especially by large agencies such as OSHA, WFP and FAO? Um, the biggest opportunity to increase up. I mean, li listen, we all need to. <laughs> My organization will join now. Um, we, we should have uh, probably bef before. Um, it's a little bit, I think, like uh, like the question I uh, liked myself when I coined it, and I still like it. Why not cash? And if not now, why? You know, <laughs> why not? It, 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 it committing to to the core humanitarian standard, and if not now, when? Uh, because it, because really, um, it's a way where we will where we need to to, to lift uh, standard and lift quality, and 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 the listening is so important here. But it's not the naive. Let's have a million seminars. Where we listen and listen and listen, and then we go away and do nothing. It has to. Be, it has to turn to action. I mean, in my view, I did the listening. I I feel I can now, with on the orders of the mothers uh, in, uh, in 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 the in the displacement camps of of uh, uh, Afghanistan, it scale up a, a multi-million dollar humanitarian emergency program to save lives this winter. Uh, you know, it, it's uh, so. Um, what, what we're ending here? I mean, the, so what? 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 I hope. Two things. I hope uh, really uh, to end that will also now happen. One is to the donors. Perhaps be less obsessed with the so-called taxpayers and the and and with the tabloids. The it's it's. <laughs> That I'm a taxpayer, uh, so is my 100-year-old uh, mother. We, we don't want to have our money go to an army of auditors and evaluators, really. We want them to go to these mothers that I met. To, uh, to then humanitarian fellows once, let's be less um, keen on promoting our, our logos all the time, our... Um, and a piece of the cake, really. Uh, and, and it has kept us from really responding as, as human kinds to fellow humankind, uh, because we were so afraid of, of losing market share. You know, human agencies who are, are aware and are, uh, the INGOs were and are, uh, and for that matter, Capital-based local NGOs to 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 local community uh, NGOs. It, 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 let's put the people at the center, and that means 
co co collective action and cooperation to a much larger extent. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jan. Thank you for inspiring us, one, to take faster action, to listen more to the people, get the resources to where they are needed and cut the middleman, and also to, uh, to increase participation collectively so that we can streamline the processes for getting the resources where they are needed. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you, Stanley. Thank, Thank you. you.